Hello Wayfinders, Don the Crown here. So you want to get a new weapon in Wayfinder, but you're not sure what to do or you just don't want to spend any money in the in-game shop. Well, this video will help you out. So the first thing you want to do is just go into town and go to this particular waypoint here, signal fire, and you're just going to go run right up to this vendor over here named Arsenal. Now, Arsenal has two different menus when you go and interact with her. One, you can go and buy weapons. These are all weapons that are the starter weapons for the current available classes. So if you like started with a silo, you get a ransom. If you started with Nis, you get slicer and dicer and so on and so forth. Note that also if you craft or like summon one of these heroes out of the gloom, you they do come with their weapon. So when I summoned Windgrave, he got a Vanguard. So I just got it, didn't have to buy it at all. Now, besides that, you can also do weapon crafting. Now, right away, you might notice that something kind of looks a little bit weird right here. We've got Grim Harvest, Grim Harvest, Grim Harvest, Grim Harvest. Why are there so many Grim Harvests? Are these different like elemental variants? No. In order to craft any of the weapons here, you're going to need uh, gold and then four major pieces. And the four major pieces are just kind of like little building blocks for the thing. You can see here that Grim Harvest requires Grim Harvest form, spirit, essence, and shell. Well, here you can craft the shell, the form, and the spirit and they each have their own requirements and things you need to farm but then of course the essence is the only thing that is drop only now unlike the character summoning screen this screen has a little bit more quality of life because if you press f you can see exactly what all the materials are so you can just go right to the essence here and see that hey this can be found by defeating the storm twins and you only need one of these now if you want a whole uh guide for what all the things are with having to run up to the vendor. I have added a tab here to my big spreadsheet. Just at the bottom here, you just want to click on weapons. And this will show you all the materials that you need. Typically, each weapon will require that you go out and farm some boss for an essence drop. That's what this boss drop tab is. There's different types of spectra that you need. These are typically found either from doing a particular type of uh, mutator on the dungeon with imbuements so you can see this one here pristine viridian spectra this is a tier 3 one this can be found in lost zones where floral mutator is active this needs to be higher level it kind of starts off as just like viridian and then uh <laughs> it just goes up from there there's also uh the like deep wood spectra these are different types of spectra that you find just by breaking crystals inside the lost zone or the dungeon and they're just found on the ground just from killing enemies or looting chests. And there's a whole bunch of them. And if we just like go through, you can see that like some of them are going to require uh, things that are, you know, shadow warped, for example. The glimmering is the tier two one. And so it'd be like shadow warped is like the tier one. It's just any shadow mutator, basically. Now, these also uh, are pretty easy to farm. I was kind of surprised at how quickly we managed to get our Harvest Moon put together, which is our first weapon we crafted. We had a whole bunch of Harvest Moon essences from farming the boss the first. And the only thing that really limited me was the Devourer's Talon. And that's because I had to like go through a quest line to unlock that particular boss. And uh, yeah, that was pretty easy. And in fact, we're really close to unlocking some additional weapons already. So the next weapon that I'm thinking about doing is Knight's Edge. I've actually gone out and crafted the form. I've already dropped the essence. I've crafted the shell. And so all I need is a little bit more gold, which is really easy. And then three more Devourer's Talons. So I just need to go farm that boss. And we'll have unlocked another weapon, which is, I think, pretty cool. I was a little bit skeptical about how hard the grind was going to be to unlock the weapons. But it appears, at least right now in the closed beta, for the most part, it's pretty easy. But there's a couple of exceptions to that. So there are a few weapons, and uh, I'll just point out Titan's Bane here, that require that you farm the world boss. And they also require that for the essence, and they also require this thing called Pyre's Torch, which drops from that same world boss. The problem with this is that every time I've gone to the world boss, one of two things have happened. I've disconnected, or uh, the boss does like this giant explosion move at the end that seemingly like unalives himself. So you don't get any loot. Uh, I don't know if that's intentional, but I haven't managed to get any loot off of this boss yet. So I'd probably stay away from trying to farm things that require Pyre's Torch. 
which is just the Titan's Bane and the Hellswarm shotgun. These are just the two weapons that require that. And then the other thing that I would kind of keep away from is Knight's Maul Viscera. So Venom, you need to farm this boss to get the essence and then also to get uh, six of the boss treasures for this. And then I believe that Tooth and Claw also requires three of these. This world boss is found like right to the west of Codex Halls. So Codex Halls here, you kind of go up to the dungeon, turn right and go down into this cave system. And there's like a little event where you need to drop worm bait. And this thing also has disconnected me several times. But, you know, if the boss does manage to get spawned, I did manage to kill it today. I got one Viscera. So I guess that's pretty good. I didn't mention, but the other boss is over here. You go to Ironstone Keep, and you kind of just walk around the backside. There's a giant burning firewall that would be active if the boss is active. But I also have seen this firewall active when the boss is even there. So it just seems a little bit buggy right now. Overall, though, weapon farming does seem pretty easy and pretty accessible. And hopefully the spreadsheet, which you know, once again, I'll link in the description, should help you out. If you want to compare some of the weapons, you can also just go to the next tab over, which is weapon compare. And uh, these are all of the different weapons. Now you notice that I've put on some weapons that aren't on the crafting sheet, like the Typhoon, because although you can't craft it, you can compare it. That's why they've been added back. But this just shows you what all the stats are. And then additionally shows you what echo slots you should expect on this, because echo slots are always going to be the same. And these matter because when you put an attack echo and an attack slot, it reduces the cost of the echo by 50%. So you can put more stuff in there. So if you're really trying to like min max your echoes, that's going to kind of matter in the long run, I would guess. Right now, though, I've been able to just slam tons of attack echoes into my stuff with uh, out any consequences. As you can see, the things are pretty high here. And uh, I could probably just move some more stuff in here. And so it's not seeming to be that big of a deal, at least in this like early access kind of early game part. But we'll see how the system evolves as the game comes out more. Hopefully this video helped you out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And we'll see you by the stream if you decide to come by. See ya.